What's up, Jason here again. When I started using Unity back a long time ago, I had to learn through books. I had to buy some books and try to read the text and look at some really weird little screenshots and figure out how to use the editor. And it worked, kind of, but I really struggled figuring out all of the important parts of Unity and all of the things that I needed to know. I knew what was in the book, but not everything that was, well, really important. So in this video, I want to give you just a quick walkthrough of some of the most important parts of the Unity Editor, show what those different parts are and how you can use them. Now if you're a really experienced Unity developer, you've probably seen most of these, but I have met plenty of professional Unity developers out there who didn't know them all, so stay tuned and see if you learn something. The first and probably the most important part of Unity is the project view. That's this window right down here that shows all of the files that are actually in your project. This includes your code and your art, and it maps directly to a folder on your system. So if I go right click and hit show in Explorer, you'll see that it actually opens up the folder right here and this assets folder matches up exactly with what we see in the project view. So this is where you will store all your files. You can drop files in there, you can browse to them and pull them out and move them around just like a normal file structure. The next most important part of the editor is the scene hierarchy. This shows us everything that's currently in our level or multiple levels because we can show multiple levels in here. It shows us we have a camera and a directional light that we can select. We can also drag things from our project view right up into the hierarchy to add them to our level. We can duplicate these objects and parent them or delete them back out. The scene view shows us a visual representation of everything that's in our level. While we can select objects in our scene hierarchy, we can actually see them and move them around in the scene view. I can just click on them and grab the little tool here to move them, scale them, rotate them, or whatever. I can also hold down the right mouse button to look around and use W, A, S, and D while I'm holding it to move just like a normal first person shooter. And if I hold shift, it sprints. The asset store is another really important part in Unity. I'd say it's probably one of the things that made Unity such an amazing engine because there are so many art assets and code assets that you can just pull into your projects and use for cheap or even free. For this one, I wanted to pull in a character. I need a nice 2D character that we can do some work with. So I search for characters, go to price, drag that price slider all the way down to free, and pull in this night sprite sheet. So just click on it and hit import, pull the sucker right in. Now I wanted to point out that while art assets are a huge, huge part of the asset store, they're not everything. There are some other really cool assets out there like Odin Inspector, one of my favorites. So I definitely recommend you go through and check them out if you're not familiar with the asset store yet. But watch out, it can be a bit of a money pit. You can get addicted and just start buying assets after assets after assets. I've done it myself and I have a couple friends who have way too many that we never even use. But like I said, it's awesome, definitely check it out. The next thing I wanna show is the built-in animation window. If you go to window, animation, and then animation, not to be confused with animator, and click the button, you'll get a window that looks like this. And you may notice that it says to begin animating this Night Attack 01, create an animation clip. So I just have to hit the create button and then I need to give it a folder and a name. So this is an attack animation, I just name it attack. Now to get animations in here, I'm gonna move my project view for a moment. And then I wanna go into this night PNG folder and take a look at all of the different sprites. If I select them, you'll see them showing up right there, down in the corner, showing this animation off. Now if I wanna make my own animation, I can do this really easily. I can just select all of these and drop them right in here and hit play. Now I've got an animation that's playing. If I want to slow this down, I can just grab this little dot at the end, kind of expand out the animation. There we go, and now it's a bit slower of an animation. I probably don't want a full second though. This seems like something that would go at about a quarter of a second. And it's worth noting that this is in seconds, or not really in seconds, one is one second. But notice that it goes up by 60ths of a second, and not hundredths of a second. So we go to 55 and then one second. Now I want to show you the animator component, but before we do that, we need to make a second animation. So to do that, I just go right here, click this button and hit create new clip. And we're going to make an idle animation. And again, just take all of the idle sprites right here, drop them right down here, expand this out a little bit and hit play. There we go. We've got an idle animation and an attack animation already created from our sprites in just a couple of seconds. So let's take a look at the next thing. Next, I want to show the animator. When we created an animation in the last 
section, it actually added an animator and an animator controller. If I double click on this controller, it opens up the animator window. You can also get to this through window, animation, and animator. That's the one I was saying, watch out for. And if we look here, you'll see that it's got an entry point and an attack and an idle. These are all of the animations that we've created with this character. We can, of course, add other animations later, but we just need these two, so I'm gonna show you how to navigate this thing real quick. First, you wanna hold down Alt and click on this back canvas area and just drag around. That's how you move your view of this animator window. Now, I want idle to be the default animation, so I select idle, right click, and hit set as layer default state. So now what'll happen is if I hit play, my little knight is gonna play his animation. In fact, let's watch it. And there you see the game view, another awesome part of the editor. So he's playing his animation, looks good. Now if I go back to my animator window, I have this attack animation as well. So let's delete the attack animation and then re-add it just by dragging it right back up here. Again, didn't change anything, just wanted to show that that's how we add them in. So what do we do with this state machine, this animator or this mechanism system? Well, we can go to this idle and right click and hit make transition and it gives us a little arrow ooh, that I can move around and I can drop it onto attack. Then I can select this little line that was created and add a condition. But I don't have a way to set up a condition quite yet because I haven't created a parameter. So to set up a parameter, I go up to this layers and parameters section. These are actually tabs. I know that's kind of hard to tell. But I go select the parameters tab, hit plus, and maybe add a bool and call it attack the capital A there. Then my conditions will allow me to select attack. I hit plus and it automatically selected attack because that's the only option. And it automatically selected true because that's the default. So when attack is true, it'll go from idle to attack. And then I can go to attack, just select it, right click, make transition, back to idle, select that transition, the one with the arrow going towards idle, add another condition and set attack equals to false. Then if I hit play, you'll see that I can switch instantly between these two animations. So let's drag the animator window down there and just click the attack, there we go. And if I unclick it, it stops attacking. The next thing I wanna show you has to do with UI elements. So imagine you're putting a button into your game and you wanna resize it. Notice how things start to get a little bit weird and it stretches out. This is actually really easy to fix, but a lot of people don't know about this one little tool, the sprite editor. So if I select my sprite asset down here in the project view, and it is set to be a sprite, I can hit the sprite editor and pop open this nice little sprite editing window. In fact, let's line this up and I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it. It's really simple. So what we need to do is slice this sprite up so that only the part that's repeatable or stretchable is inside the green square. So I just take this, drag it over right about here and right about there, and then down here and up. There, actually I wanna pull it up just a little bit more because I need to get past those corners there. Right there, and these actually needed to come in a little bit. It's a good thing I watched that. There we go, so now that it's in there, we should be able to apply, go back over to our game, and notice that our button's no longer doing that weird stretching. We still always have a constant border size there. The next thing I wanna show you has to do with this text right here. The default Unity text looks pretty bad, and it always has, but there are new options, and in fact, they're even built into the editor now. You used to have to go to Window, and then go to Package Manager, and select Text Mesh Pro, but if you're in a newer version of Unity, it's already there. So I can just select my button and go to Game Object, go to UI, and Text Mesh Pro Text. It's gonna give me a little pop-up saying that it needs to import some essentials, and I'll always hit yes for that, because we need those essentials. It's really just the font files and the shaders that we need. I'm gonna close that out. Then I'll make this text mesh pro text a child, delete the other text, maybe put some words in here like, hello, Jason, and maximize this button. So to do that, I select the rect transform tool right here, hold down shift and alt. Well, that was alt and shift. And then click on this stretch button. There we go, now our text is stretched out and you already see it's a lot crisper. But we get a ton of other options with Text Mesh Pro as well. It's not just crisp text. We have, well, outlining, uh, font selections, coloring, highlighting, pop-ups, all kinds of cool, really interesting features. We can even animate the text. So if you're doing anything with text in Unity, definitely use Text Mesh Pro. The next section of the editor that I wanted to show you actually required me to write a little bit of example code. So I've set up a car script and a car game object, and then I want to go to Window, 
and then general and console. It was actually already open down there and it probably is for you as well. But if you didn't know that and can't find it, that's how you get to it. So here we have our console window. This lets us see information, warnings, and errors. I had warnings off, that turns info off, turns errors off. Usually I leave them all on, but sometimes we'll flip between them. There's also a collapse button that collapses multiple instances of the same thing, a clear button to clear it all out, and a clear on play that clears when we play. Let's hit play, watch it clear the already empty list, and then see what it can do. Well, we can see, oh, look at that. We've actually got a bunch of errors. And if I check my log speed, we've got errors now mixed in with uh, actual log entries. If I hit collapse, you'll see that these cut down. So I just have this many log entries and that many errors faster than I can keep track. And I can hide the infos, hide the errors, etc. So we'll stop that. I'll go over to my code. In fact, I can just double click on it right here, go directly to the code and see what it is. If you look back here, it said that, hey, this is a null reference exception, just means that this thing was never initialized. So we just edit the code and say equals a new queue of floats. Come back in and play. The console can be a great lifesaver. It'll really save you a lot of time finding errors and issues. And if you just need to log out a little bit of extra stuff, that can be really helpful as well. But there are some drawbacks that you'll see in just a second. Look at that. Bug is fixed. Now let's take a look at some of the drawbacks of all of this logging. To do that, we go to Window, Analysis, and Profiler. And what you'll see is a whole bunch of charts and stuff that might look a little bit confusing. First thing I want to do though is just switch out of Timeline View into Hierarchy Mode. I think it's a little bit more approachable at first. And then take a look at this CPU usage section. This is actually showing us how much CPU is being used and what our frame times are. Now if I click in here, it'll stop and pause the execution of our game and I can actually expand out this hierarchy to see what's taking time and how much time it's taking. We can see right here the time in milliseconds for our player loop is 11.78, which is still gonna get us well over our 60 frames a second. Well, not well over, but over enough. And we can expand out here and keep expanding, keep expanding. And if we look right here, you'll see that we're actually spending about a millisecond almost every frame just logging this extra stuff out. So logs are great, they're really useful. Don't leave them in in your code unless you absolutely need them. Pull them out or strip them out or use something else when it comes to actual production release. One other really important thing to see in here is the GC alloc. This is showing how much garbage is allocated, which is what causes those garbage collections that cause a freeze up on a mobile device or virtual reality or something. So if you're working on a device that's not basically a Windows or a desktop app, you want to look at the garbage collection allocation as well. And you'll even see big spikes appear in here eventually when, uh, when the allocations actually hit. If we check that box right there, we're not going to get any now because we're really not allocating that much. But if I let it run long enough, we'd see a big spike in the allocation cleanup and well, collection. The last thing I wanted to show with this script is the debug view of the inspector. I know a lot of people don't use this and don't know it exists, but it can really save you a lot of time. So if we look at our car script, I actually have a private average speed float here. It's just meant to keep track of the average speed. It's not very efficient or anything like that, but I wanted to be able to say, hey, as I turn the speed up, look, average speed goes up. And as I turn it down, the average speed slowly goes down, but it doesn't go instantly because it's the average over the last 100 frames. So what if I want to look at that value? Well, I can first drag this over so you can see it. Click this little drop down, hit debug, and drag that back over. And now you'll see that I can see all of my private variables. I can see this average speed. I can't adjust it, but I can actually look at it. Now, I don't want to stay in this debug mode most of the time because it does break custom inspectors, like the transform inspector. I don't want to use the transform like that. I want to use it in normal mode. But it is very important to know that you can bounce back and forth between those. In fact, you can even go here, add a tab, and add another inspector, and just set one of these inspectors to be debug mode and one to be in normal mode if you wanted to, or dock them or whatever. Like I said, most of the time I just kind of switch back and forth though. The last thing I want to show you is a little bit of a bonus and something that a lot of people don't use, and that's the test runner. We go to Window, General, and Test Runner, and well, it pops out every single time, but I can redock it. And this allows me to run my unit tests that are built in Unity. Now, if you're not doing any unit tests in Unity, I highly recommend you check it out. I've got a 
couple videos on it and I can link some other series on it. I think it's a really important thing and can really help your projects. And again, this window is built right in there, just ready for you to use and take advantage of. So those are some of the most important parts of the Unity Editor and a lot of what you need to know to get started using the engine. If you're not using any of them, I highly recommend that you at least try them all out, check them out, dig in, and see what they're about. And if you have some other recommendations or suggestions for things that you think people should know about, please just drop a comment down below. I'd love to talk about them some more and even discuss them in the comments. Also, thanks to everybody on Patreon. Really appreciate it, everybody. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, share this video with your friends. All right, thanks again. Bye.